Hello, my name is Ann Lilly. Today I will be talking about DACA. DACA is a deferred action for childhood arrivals put into place by President Obama in 2012. Since its establishment, it has benefited over 800,000 undocumented youth who were brought into this country illegally by their parents. DACA allows them to work and go to school um, legally without the fear of deportation. Many people claim that instead of helping the United States, they unbenefit it. My proposition is that DACA benefits the United States. My first supporting claim is that DACA benefits the United States economy by contributing to state, federal, and local taxes. My second claim is that DACA benefits the United States economy by supporting businesses across the country. My first claim as to why DACA benefits the U.S. economy through taxes is because according to the research from the Center for American Progress, in the 2017 study, nearly 65% of recipients have stated that they purchased their first car. The average cost paid was $16,469. This is important because purchases such as these um, generate state revenue that the states collect and ben they benefit from. According to the Institute on Taxation and Economic Policy, they state how since DACA, um, recipients have paid about $2 billion in state and local taxes, meaning that the state takes this money and they use it to fund public goods such as school and roads. Um, they also, because they're working legally, they also contribute to social security money. Um, um, the Center for American Progress also stated that over a 10 year period, the United States would be losing $24.6 billion in social security and Medicare. Um, although they are contributing to it, They'll, they'll never be able to receive this money because as Masoom from the Huffington Post stated, because DACA does not provide a real legal status, individuals will never actually be able to claim any of these social security benefits, meaning that they're willing to contribute to it, yet are not expecting anything in return because they know that they won't actually get anything. Um, in addition to DACA benefiting the economy through taxes, they benefit the United States by supporting businesses. David Beer, Immigration Policy Analysis at the Cato Institute, states how 36% of DACA recipients, 25 and older, hold a bachelor's degree. Um, they work in companies such as Walmart, Apple, General Motors, Amazon, Chase, and many others. All these companies employ DACA recipients because they know they're well educated and are able to um, are able to contribute to their companies. Um, the Center for American Progress data how all these companies account for 2.8 trillion in annual revenue. If they were to be removed not only would the companies be losing a lot of potential money but they'd also be losing a lot of employees that are well qualified. Our nation's GDP would also um, be, um, would also decline. Also, according to the Center for American Progress, they state how in the next 10 years, the United States would lose 460.3 billion on a national GDP because they're no longer producing services or purchasing goods. Um, the money won't actually be reported to the federal government and the GDP would decrease a lot over the next 10 years. Um, in conclusion, these dreamers have contributed to the economy through taxes and supporting businesses. They contribute to Medicare and Social Security so that, they're, so that one day they can achieve the American dream.
All right, well, at the end you say it's, their goal is to achieve the American dream, and I'm not exactly sure what the American dream is. One of the things that you've said yourself from DACA is what they won't be is Americans as a consequence of DACA because they won't be eligible for any of the benefits. They don't get citizenship as a result of this. So I do think that there is a little of a disconnect at the conclusion of the speech. I do think that... Uh, there are times when you're doing a little more reading than you want to, but frequently you do look up and start talking to us, and when you do that, you're much more effective than when you're having to look at the notes repeatedly. Um, and you need to project your voice a little bit more, have a little bit more energy. Sometimes it's, I guess it comes across that you're being shy, and I don't think you need to be shy. You, you should be a little more forceful in the presentation. At the beginning of the speech, you identify the subject clearly. Uh, there's a straightforward uh, preview. There are only two supporting points, so it's not that complicated to keep track of. Um, the uh, tax issue, you get to almost immediately. Um, and uh, the first example that you cite is the purchase of cars, but it's, it's an interesting statistic. It's 65% of those uh, over a particular age have purchased a, a, a car, and um, that's, that sounds pretty solid, you know, there. Um, there was also a statistic about uh, having a bachelor degree someplace. I'm, I've lost that one here somewhere. I know it's here because I did hear you say it. Um, and so uh, I think putting together the estimate of 800,000, and uh, I don't know what percentage is over the age of 20, and 65% of them have bought a car. I don't know how many cars that represents, uh, but it's a, it's a number. How significant that income is, though, that's the thing that you want to be talking about. You do mention that there's $2 billion in state and local taxes that get paid by these groups, and that's, that's a good piece of information, although there's not any explanation about what resources they utilize. For example, the thing that you mentioned, going to school. Um, we spend resources on doing that sort of thing, and so there is a cost to that. And if the $2 billion is more than the cost of that, then it seems like we're getting a good deal. If the $2 billion is less than the cost of that, then perhaps we're not getting such a good deal, and we don't really have any way of making an estimate here. Um, there's some other information that uh, you cite pretty regularly, the sources that you are, are getting information from. I thought you did a nice job on that, um, telling us about what the long-term economic impact of these uh, DACA recipients is going to be. Um, oh, there's the, the statistic that, about the percentage that over that have the degree. I see it right now. Uh, and you mentioned that they're working in industries. I do think you do a little bit of uh, stretching here when you talk about how significant the industries are that they work for and try to make that part of the economic uh, package without necessarily being able to tell us how much of that $2.8 trillion they and themselves are responsible for. That's, uh, I think, a little bit of a stretch that's going on there. All right. Thank you.